As we've been reporting, Hurricane Isaias caused major flooding in Puerto Rico Friday. The storm is forecasted to hit the Bahamas and parts of Florida over the weekend before making its way up the East Coast. Florida has already shut down its state-run coronavirus testing sites until Wednesday in anticipation. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli joins me now. So, Jeff, we just got the new advisory from the National Hurricane Center. What's changed? There are some big changes, actually, and I'm not surprised by them. Uh, first of all, it's starting to get itself better organized. Hurricane hunters were out there earlier and starting to get it back together. It had weakened a little bit this morning. Number two, and this is really important, the track is now right almost up along the Florida coast. Now, Earlier, it looked as though that the center of the storm may pass over, let's say, uh, Grand Bahama Island, maybe around Freeport or so. Now it's shifted, you know, as much as uh, 30 to 50 miles west of that, and it takes the hurricane force winds very close to the Florida coast. Uh, and it could still strengthen. Right now, the winds are 75, 80, so it's a minimal Cat 1. You know, it's likely to strengthen to a strong Cat 1. It may even become a Category 2. But even if we're forecasting Cat 1, we always tell folks to prepare for one category higher. So get ready. You know, you may lose power. Trees may, you know, fall. Power lines may fall. And that means you may be without power for days. And in Florida, that is never good uh, because you, know, you lose air conditioning in the middle of summer. Uh, and so, Jeff, we're looking at some graphics now. Give us the time frame here on the probable worst impacts for Florida. What's the critical time frame there? Obviously, residents need to be preparing now. Yeah, oh, for sure. That's, that's for sure. You have until, you know, tonight, basically. Tomorrow morning, some squalls begin to move in in South Florida. So Broward County, some in Miami-Dade, more so into Palm Beach County. The worst of it's going to be later tomorrow, tomorrow night into Sunday. But by late tomorrow... Uh, the strongest winds will be right up against the coast, maybe Palm Beach County, maybe the Treasure Coast. And eventually by Sunday, the worst winds will be near Cape Canaveral. Um, so that basically means that you have to do the rest of your preparing today or maybe, maybe early tomorrow morning, you have a little bit of a window to do kind of last minute uh, preparations. You know, uh, hurricane force winds are mainly going to be out over the water, but they've edged closer to the coast and now they may actually be up against some of the populated I-95 cities. Uh, generally, though, mostly north of Fort Lauderdale. So we're talking you know, the worst impacts are going to be in Palm Beach County, so Boca Raton northward. And, and, and probably the worst of it is going to be around Cape Canaveral, just because that hangs out a little bit into the ocean. Um, you know, there could be some isolated, fast-moving tornadoes as well. We tend to see that with landfalling hurricanes. So you always have to worry about that as well. So again, just to reiterate, this could actually make landfall in Florida now. It no longer looks like it's going to be headed east. It could be really close, if not an actual landfall, along Florida's east coast. And so then what are we looking at after that? Where does the storm potentially go after that? Would it continue to strengthen, for instance? It could. It depends upon if it moves over Florida, it will weaken. If it hugs the coast or stays east of that, the Gulf Stream, really warm waters right there. So it'll probably retain its intensity. Once it gets off Georgia and South Carolina, it begins to hook a little bit more northeast. It really moves over some of the warmest waters uh, that we have. Um, temperatures, water temperatures are a good three to four degrees above normal there. So it could either re-strengthen or at least maintain its intensity. So there's a chance, there's a window of opportunity before it hits likely North Carolina, maybe South Carolina, that it could strengthen, you know, to a cat two. It's not out of the question, out of the realm of possibilities. Next step is going to be New England, Long Island, maybe even New York City as we head into uh, probably Tuesday. So it's Monday night for the Carolinas, late Monday, and then late Tuesday for the New York City, Long Island, southeast New England area, Tuesday night. Uh, and, and it, you know, it's likely to be a tropical storm by then, although it's not out of the realm of possibilities for it to even be a hurricane, a very minimal one, just simply because water temperatures are so abnormally warm off of the coast of New England, record shattering, actually, water temperatures off of most of, of the East Coast. And, Jeff, does climate change play a role in that abnormally warm water? Sure. The background oceans have warmed since 1900 by about 2 degrees or so, 1 to 2 degrees, uh, depending upon if you're using Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, and so that is an extra layer of warming already. You know, warmer water temperatures really do, you know, supply a lot of energy, kind of like steroids almost for storms. 
And um, just a couple of degrees of, of warmer water is, is not an incremental increase in energy. It's a lot more than that. It really can feed some very big systems. It's one of the reasons why we're off to such a crazy start with hurricane season. We're at a record pace. We just actually had Tropical Depression 10 named a couple of minutes ago. So we're soon to be probably up to the number 10 storm. We're way above record pace already. And it's likely to be, I'd say, the second most active hurricane season on, on record in the Atlantic Basin by the time it's all said and done. All right. Uh, Jeff Riardelli for us. Jeff, I know it's going to be a busy weekend. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's for sure. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. Mark again, Weather Channel Live. I want to do a, a quick 20, 30 second intro, let you see what's going on with this stuff before I get you over to the Weather Channel. That way you can see the effects that's going on with these winds. These are very serious winds. Uh, we're picking up wind gusts as much as 39 miles an hour there. Uh, we're getting wind gusts offshore on this one at 58 miles an hour. We're getting storm surge over here by Myrtle Beach, and it is coming ashore now. So make sure that you're inside, you got everything going to good, you got everything you need, batteries, flashlights, candlelights. This is going to be a few hours of rain. These bands are dropping like two to three inches per hour. Uh, let me get you over to the weather channel. You can see exactly what it looks like with this winds and why it's not safe to be outside. Uh, just in case you lose any power, that's why I wanted to get this out tonight. In the bottom of my link is a power outage uh, link so you can see where the power outage is going on around you and when it might be back on. God bless all of you in this event tonight. I'll see you in the morning. And I hope everything will be okay. I've, I've done a few of these things, so yeah, this is this is a hurricane high wall. Absolutely. Uh, we've had reports of power outages and poles and trees down at Carolina Beach. Curry Beach as well in spots, and we were talking about that uh, for folks that still have power down there, about how that was coming your way. Oak Island have a 91 mile hour wind gust, uh, which is just incredible to get that kind of wind transported down to the surface. We're, the, the wind in this northern eye wall I was talking about earlier has weakened a little bit, okay? It's still gonna crank as it is right now, but it has weakened a little bit, thank goodness. We may not see the 90 or the 80, uh, maybe something in the tune of 60 to 75 miles per hour. We'll see. Uh, you know, it's all about how much of that gets down here. But the rainfall is definitely a little steadier, a little heavier, and our winds are coming in uh, out of the east right now, especially with the eye down to our south. All right, as we watch the radar, we're starting to see these rain bands ripple inland. Jacksonville, North Carolina, you're getting crushed. Uh, Dr. Nab, I noticed Raleigh is now getting into some of that heavy rain. Let's talk about the inland flood threat and the kind of rainfall rates that you're seeing with some of this as it develops. Yeah, Jim, uh, Raleigh's gonna get some very heavy rainfall and maybe even the tropical storm force winds and it's gonna be overnight tonight, just a few hours away. And if you uh, back out from what we're seeing you know, near the center of the storm, where we've got really high rain rates of two to three inches per hour, but you've already got a lot of rain going on to the north of there. And these gusty winds that are starting to show up in inland locations are gonna spread inland as well. So look, it's already raining moderate rain up in Raleigh, and you've got continuous rain. It will not stop raining in Raleigh until the center goes past them. So we're talking hours of heavy rainfall. And you know, again, the, the time that winds of tropical storm force in Raleigh might start might be about 2 a.m. or so. And uh, you know, they could take out power, could down some trees. And uh, you know, that's just for Raleigh. And then you are gonna be talking about places like Baltimore tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So this is a fast mover. So Jim, you are getting into uh, you know, that southeastern eye wall and I'm sorry, the northeastern eye wall winds out of the southeast, but a lot of this will hold together. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the, the banding of this system is gonna hold together because it's moving so fast, it's not gonna fall apart. And we know that that wind field unravels as, as these come ashore. So uh, we're going to see the wind with this also spread outward. Uh, Dr. Nab, as you were talking about Raleigh and the inland flood threat, notice how much heavier our rain has gotten, by the way. So we're in this now. We're in this. Uh, we just had a, a surge, a power surge out on the street. And I see no where I was looking before. And I was telling you guys, I was, I was looking at some spots out there where we might lose some power. There's no lights now. So we've lost some power. And what happens for everybody that, that isn't familiar with this, these, these, oh. Oh. The, 
These transformers don't blow. They're meant to trip when the power is surged. All right, so that's the flash that you see. That's the, that's the transformer tripping. So it doesn't, well, there's another one. There's another one going. So yeah, we're starting to lose power here uh, on Riceville because of these winds uh, in this northeastern eye wall. So now it's a combination of very heavy rain and tremendously strong wind uh, in this northern eye wall. Yeah, now there, there's just no power out on the street here. So here I am, 100 yards, 200, 250 yards, uh, some of the streets out there here in Wrightsville now, now without power. Holy smoke. Yeah, not, not, uh, not easy, uh, an easy combination to stand in out here, guys. Uh, and, and it, what's really interesting is if you think about it, this is a Category 1 hurricane, all right? And, and, I, and I may have had a wind uh, over 70 miles per hour here, is, is what I'm thinking. But this is a Cat 1. So just imagine you go up in, in category, and it doesn't just double and triple. It's an exponential relationship with the power of the wind. So, you know, obviously a, a, a stronger hurricane has a lot of potential to do a lot more damage uh, than what we're going to see through here. But still, power outages are power outages. Inland flood threats is obviously with us here. We've had some pretty incredible storm surge uh, and some flooding as well associated with this on the South Carolina coast. And now we have so many millions of you that are still going to be in the path of a very, very unusual and energetic mid-latitude jet stream that is going to come up and inject its energy into the tropical system. So winds will still gust to hurricane force, potentially as far north as even New York City. Hey Jim, and given that it's night it for New England either, because we know we have elevation there. Yeah. Jim, are you right. able to are Don't you seeing have... are you seeing any indication of lightning off to your east? Because outer bands appear to have some lightning in them at a pretty large distance from you. Are you seeing any lightning? No, what, what I've seen has got a green flare to it. Uh, you know, more in the power surge variety, but you know, I, I'm looking inland. Let me, Doc, I can't even look east. Yeah. <laughs> but what's I'm happening? I'm looking off to the, to the northeast right now. I do not see, I don't see any flashes at this point, but you know how they come and go. Yeah. Uh, and it's not rapid, continuous, like a, like an MCS or something in the plains. But, but what's interesting, uh, Jim, is... That. So uh, the yeah. way I'm facing is actually uh, toward the toward the west and through here. Yeah, it, it's often the case that the eye wall doesn't have very much lightning, but the first band outward from the eye wall can have a lot of lightning. So there's a lot of lightning in that band going up into Moorhead City. So that band is really electrified, yes. but this eye wall, uh, not really. And that's typical of hurricanes. The outer bands usually have more lightning, but you are in the thick of it, Jim. And I think it's going to be a while because of the motion of the system. You're going to be on the Gee, eastern thanks. side for a while. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we, and that's kind of one of the reasons that I, I picked this location, frankly, is because I, I knew it had a shot at either the eye or, or the eye wall, which is what we wanted to show you uh, with this, whether it was a tropical storm or hurricane. You know, Riceville Beach is no stranger. Wilmington is no stranger to tropical systems. I've been mentioning this about 1.68 years, uh, you know, a difference in time. You either get brushed or directly hit uh, by this. But we have lost power, uh, as far as I can see, out uh, into in the interior part of Riceville Beach. Again, ocean to my left, interior here uh, to the beach and over toward the causeway. Uh, power flashes have, have definitely been one in, in abundance here in the last five minutes with this wind and rain. So we're, yeah, we're in this. And, and if we don't get into the eye, uh, obviously it's not going to get calm because we're going to go from the northeast eye wall to the eastern eye wall, which is still coming in off the water because we're uh, essentially right on the water. So we may not get a break here uh, in Riceville Beach. Uh, bummer certainly for, for us and the crew because you always love when you're out here to at least get in the eye and even people at home, you know, to get a break from the relentless pounding of, of, of rain and whatnot on, the, on their uh, on their wind shields and uh, outside their homes. And, you know, think about it. All this rain that's coming down is saturating the soils very, very quickly here. So it makes it much easier for the trees to come down. You don't need as much uh, wind in through here. So, Doc, what do you see in terms of OBS? Or what, what kind? Of, you know, I mentioned Oak Island 91. Have we seen anything close to that, or even uh, of hurricane force since then? 
uh, Wilmington at the airport, for example, even though it's a little inland there. Yeah, they're gusting uh, close to hurricane force at times at Wilmington at an inland location, but haven't seen a gust to hurricane force there. And there's a buoy offshore that gusted over 60, but that was before we got into the heart of the eye wall. So we'll keep looking for those obs, but Jim, I gotta believe that we're not catching the strongest winds with these uh, conventional observations. And I, I think, Jim, that the center is very close to Holden Beach, as you kind of called it. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, you know, that we'll see what the Hurricane Center calls uh, as it moves north. He said accelerating now about 22 miles per hour. But yeah, we're definitely in a hurricane eye wall at this point, uh, Doc. I, I'm, you know, I got the bracing down here with one leg in the back, one in the front, uh, trying to parallel the wind uh, to me and coming, have it coming across me. Uh, either way, the rain is a stinger. Uh, even with any little bit of my face that's exposed, it really stings. It's, it's kind of like getting sandblasted, uh, especially at speeds like we have right in through here. So a uh, heck of a storm here from what this thing looked like yesterday and, and what it looked like now and certainly has become. Uh, this is what happens when you take away the shear and you can allow this thing to really beef up, if you will, uh, over the Gulf Street. Holy smoke. All right, there you go, guys. You see how it is. Power outages is going on like crazy. So please like, share the video, help people out, let them know the power is going out. If you look on the bottom of that video, by the time they did the whole message, it said 15,000, then it went 37,000, then it went 50,000 people without power in South Carolina, North Carolina. Power outage link is on the bottom of my description. Check it out if you want to know what's going on with the power and where it's going on. Did y'all see the big flash that was behind Jim? That, that was probably Transformers popping. That probably wasn't lightning. So God bless every single one of you. Hope you are safe. There are tornado warnings popping up left and right everywhere. Stay indoors. Stay safe. If you want to know about the hurricane force winds all the way up the whole east coast, I got it on my last video this afternoon. I showed the hurricane force wind gusts and who's got in potential for that for these next couple of days. God bless you. Stay safe. Isaias as she strengthens into a hurricane just hours before hitting the Carolina coastline. No deal as President Trump and Democrats remain at odds over the next stimulus package. And an Edwardo County police officer is accused of stealing from a dead man's home while investigating how he died. But our big story tonight tracking Isaias as the storm keeps moving towards the Carolinas. In the last few hours, Isaias picked up more speed and is now a Category 1 hurricane. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Tom Tassemeyer. Tom. Uh, Stan, it is holding on to some of that strength. 85 mile an hour sustained winds now bearing down on the Carolina coast. Looks like it will lose some of that punch as it moves over land, but it's moving so quickly it will retain some of the strong winds and heavy rains as it moves north as well. That is one of the features of this storm. It is going to be zipping along very quickly now. Current uh, uh, position has got it 25 miles just to the south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, so it's about to make landfall there on the South Carolina coast. We've been seeing winds gusting over 70 miles an hour and buoys there placed along the coastal areas as it makes its approach. That Category 1 storm, as you can see, is expected to cut right across eastern North Carolina into southeastern Virginia, not too far from Norfolk, just west of Virginia Beach and Norfolk tomorrow morning, and then quickly across the lower part of the bay and cutting across our eastern shore middle part of the day tomorrow. By early afternoon, it's likely to be passing us by, heading on up into New Jersey, and by tomorrow evening, it's way up into uh, southeastern New York State. So it is going to zip through very quickly, but it will likely uh, produce, as it's moving across our area, some uh, very heavy rains, potentially three to six inches of rain, gusts to 35 or 45 miles an hour around Baltimore, and 45 to 60 mile an hour gusts on the eastern shore, even higher than that, right along the coach coast uh, down at Ocean City. Plus, the tides are going to run a few feet above normal. The good news is it moves through very quickly, but we're going to have to get through some rough hours tomorrow morning going into the early afternoon. Stan? All right, Tom, thank you very much. Hey, let's give you a live look right now from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina tonight as strong winds and heavy rain is slamming the coastline. There are now concerns over heavy flooding in that area and to the north as the storm is expected to move north, just as Tom mentioned. And people right here in Baltimore tonight spent the night preparing for the potential flooding from that storm. As I love news, Reporter Kyrie tells us the city gave out sandbags to people this evening. 
Oh yeah, Stan, uh, starting this morning, residents were able to come out here, pick up up to 10 sandbags, and there was a lot of people who took advantage. The lines were long, and so much so the city officials decided to extend that availability for several more hours into the night. Thanks, Shoveling, packing, and heavy lifting in the wind and rain isn't how any of these people wanted to spend their Monday night. But for people like Fells Point resident Stuart Reed... Definitely a little anxiety, uh, just not sure what it's going to be like. The possibility of flooding like he's seen in the past is making him nervous. I know down here it floods, Harbor East it floods. Just kind of preparing. Our streets never really flooded that bad, but just from what I've seen on social media and stuff today, it uh, looks like it's going to be worse than normal. So just trying to do everything we can to, to prepare. City officials are warning about possible flooding by the harbor and other places near waterways, especially areas that have flooded in the past, like the parking lots and streets near Falls Road and Smith Avenue in North Baltimore. And flooding has caused a big mess around the Clipper Mill Business Park as well. Drivers, emergency officials say, should move their cars to higher ground and secure trash cans. And flashlights, battery-powered radios, and fully charged cell phones are good ideas as well. Beginning tonight, through Tuesday and into Wednesday night, citizens should expect disruption. Power outages, down trees, blocked roadways, and flooding are all possibilities. The crowd in Fells Point included some business owners and people from throughout the city who are especially worried about their basements. Sometimes we get water in the basement, and this is a good thing to block the uh, water from going into the basement. The other rain last week, we got a little bit, so it's like, when I heard this on the news, let's go. Yeah, and to help out with any possible basement issues, city officials are asking people to clear out the storm drains around their homes. That will help out as well. And tonight, check on your sump pump just to make sure it's working okay. And if you have any sewage backup issues tomorrow, uh, definitely call 311 right away. Reporting live in Fells Point tonight, Kai Reed, WBAL, TV 11 News. That's some great advice, Kai. Thank you. And it looks like Ocean City could be hit with some serious winds tomorrow. This weekend, Ocean City is supposed to host the largest fishing tournament in the world, the White Marlin Open. So not only are they dealing with COVID restrictions, they're also worrying about the storm. That's why Mayor Rick Meehan says they're taking precautions for strong surf and rough winds along the boardwalk. We will have some rain. We will experience flooding in those typical areas downtown where we get water, even during a nor'easter. Um, so we're hoping it moves pretty quickly, stays on its current path, which is, means it's going to move through pretty quickly. Should be out of here sometime late tomorrow afternoon. Now let's hope. And we mentioned the White Marlin Open. We are told a few boats went out today, but none will be going out tomorrow. They've extended the tournament until August 9th. All right, over to Howard County now, where Ellicott City is certainly no stranger to flooding. So as Isaia makes its way towards Maryland, Howard County Executive Calvin Ball is urging the city and the entire county to be prepared. We're proactively working with businesses and residents on Ellicott City Main Street to ensure cars are not parked in the floodplain. There are not loose items out that may clog our stream channels and that they are properly prepared for an emergency. Howard County's EcoWorks team spent the day removing any debris in Ellicott City's watershed. All businesses with outdoor dining will need to secure or stow away anything left outside. And stand. Tropical storm or hurricane, you know, Riceville Beach is no stranger. Wilmington is no stranger to tropical systems. I've been mentioning this about 1.68 years, uh, you know, a difference in time. You either get brushed or directly hit uh, by this. But we have lost power, uh, as far as I can see, out uh, into the interior part of Riceville Beach. Again, ocean to my left, interior here uh, to the beach and over toward the causeway. Uh, power flashes have, have definitely been one in, in abundance here in the last five minutes with this wind and rain. So we're, yeah, we're in this. And if we don't get into the eye, uh, obviously it's not going to get calm because we're going to go from the northeast eye wall to the eastern eye wall, which is still coming in off the water because we're uh, essentially right on the water. So we may not get a break here uh, in Riceville Beach. Uh, bummer certainly for, for us and the crew because you always love when you're out here to at least get in the eye and even people at home, you know, to get a break from the relentless pounding of, of, of rain and whatnot on, on their uh, on their wind shields and uh, outside their homes. And, you know, think about it. All this rain that's coming down is saturating the soils very, very quickly here. So it makes it much easier 
for the trees to come down. You don't need as much uh, wind in through here. So, Doc, what do you see in terms of OBS? Or what, what kind? You know, I mentioned Oak Island 91. Have we seen anything close to that, or even uh, of hurricane force since then? Uh, Wilmington at the airport, for example, even though it's a little inland there. Yeah, they're gusting uh, close to hurricane force at times at Wilmington at an inland location, but haven't seen a gust to hurricane force there. And there's a buoy offshore that gusted over 60, but that was before we got into the heart of the eye wall. So we'll keep looking for those obs, but Jim, I gotta believe that we're not catching the strongest winds with these uh, conventional observations. And I, I think, Jim, that the center is very close to Holden Beach, as you kind of called it. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll see what the Hurricane Center calls uh, as it moves north. You said accelerating now, about 22 miles per hour. But yeah, we're definitely in a hurricane eye wall at this point, uh, Doc. I, I'm, you know, I got the bracing down here with one leg in the back, one in the front, uh, trying to parallel the wind uh, to me and coming, have it coming across me. Uh, either way, the rain is a stinger. Uh, even with any little bit of my face that's exposed, it really stings. It's, it's kind of like getting sandblasted, uh, especially at speeds like we have right in through here. So, a uh, heck of a storm here from what this thing looked like yesterday and, and what it looked like now and certainly has become. Uh, this is what happens when you take away the shear and you can allow this thing to really beef up, if you will, uh, over the Gulf Street. Holy smoke! has got to be seeing a slight change in the wind direction with time here because as that eye wall gets closer or the eye gets closer it's going to pass just west of him so as he stays in the eastern eye wall here as the storm goes in this direction i think as it goes by then the winds are going to turn more southerly and eventually south southwesterly so jim get ready to be turning slightly more southerly as it goes by you you'll know when the eye is just to your west yeah, and what's interesting, because of where we are in the building, uh, we may actually see a calm in the wind. You know, so we'll we'll show you that, and then we'll move and show you where the winds are. Because you know as well as I, wind around building is very, very tricky. Uh, the way it converges and accelerates and, and things like that. And obviously, if you're blocked from, the, you know, if you're on the north side of the building with a south wind, uh, unless you're out where it's coming around the building and eddying, you're not going to get much wind at all. But right now, Doc, that's not a wind is not a problem here. We're getting absolutely hammered uh, with this northern eye wall. And you were you were right. Worst part of this coming in. It's here. We've lost power in a lot of locations. Uh, again, heading back toward the causeway, which is over my right shoulder here. The ocean here. Uh, watching earlier the water come all the way up. And now who knows? You know, you, you get this kind of wind and the push. Even as the tide's coming out, you can still push the water back in. So my thinking is it hasn't gone down uh, all that much. Doc, take it away. Yeah, Jim, I, looking at the Weather Service chat, you know, they're relaying that some law enforcement folks and like Carolina Beach are reporting that power is out. That's in the same stretch of coastline yes. right in here. And again, you know, just by looking at the reflectivities and I've looked at the velocities too, it's, it is extremely close to being on the coastline. And it's again between the South Carolina and North Carolina border and, and the Cape here. And again, Holden Beach, as Jim mentioned, is one of the communities that's right in there. But again, it's moving off to the north northeast very quickly and so that's why the center is unlikely to pass over Jim who's right here and so he's going to be in the eastern eye wall it's going to be a long couple of hours where you are in the eye wall and the wind will go from you know it was more southeasterly now it'll turn as the system goes right by you it'll turn more southerly and then south southwesterly save for the effects of buildings in your immediate vicinity Jim you know, it, it's, Doc, even as you're speaking a little bit, it's, it's sadly, unfortunately for me, it's coming a little bit more in my face right now uh, than it was. So a little bit of that is starting, and then we see that, you know, as the, as the eye wall transitions uh, up and north to us. But, I mean, this is just relentless rainfall uh, coming in here. Any, any idea of what the rates are? I, I mean, this has got to be, you know, three, two, three inches an hour uh, at, at what we're getting in this band. I mean, it's really, really intense. But the biggest deal here is, in the last 15 minutes, uh, we have seen surges in the power, and now 
looking out again, uh, just away from the beach, a couple hundred yards uh, where there is many, many homes. I do not see any power at this point. Maybe a, a lantern in somebody's window. You know, maybe someone has a generator. But all in all, all the power that I was looking at earlier, and I told you I would watch for you as this eye wall came in, uh, is gone now. So uh, you mentioned Doc Carolina Beach. Curry Beach is another community down there. Um, you know, Oak Island had 91 miles an hour. We, we, you know, we're not getting, I, I don't think we've had 91 here, but I, I don't know. Who knows? We, we, we've definitely gusted a hurricane force uh, from, from what I can tell, because I've, I've certainly done a, a few of these things. But either way you slice it, the kind of wind that we have right now uh, and the kind of weather with this eye wall is going to cause power outages. We know that because we've seen it, uh, and we know that because it's moving through and it's moving to the north. Doug, why don't you take the radar and actually let people uh, that haven't gone through this yet know who's coming. I know up toward Topsail, uh, Topsail Beach will be another one of these areas. No stranger, of course, to hurricanes. 96, they took Bertha on the chin. Back to you. Yeah, Topsail Beach and Surf City a little bit farther up the coast here. You aren't in the northeastern eye wall yet, but you will be before too much longer. And again, I, I think Jim is right in this area on the coast, uh, you know, from Wilmington, and the reflectivities are really sky high there. I would bet that the rainfall rates are in the vicinity of three plus inches per hour in that location. And again, center of circulation is extremely close to making landfall officially, perhaps. Hurricane Center will probably be telling us that extremely soon. And the center of circulation is going to be moving north-northeast and where Jim is in this whole stretch of coastline you know, uh, in the Wilmington area is going to be in the eastern eye wall. You're not going to get the eye. So there's not going to be a break. Uh, and, but I, I will, th that does remind me to say, Jim, that people who are in the eye do not go out in it with a fast-moving hurricane. The south side will be on you before you know it. No, it, it was interesting earlier because uh, Shalom reported some fog with that, too. So it, it, it's really calm and really foggy outside uh, for a second or two uh, as this comes ashore. And then, obviously, we'll get the backside of it. Winds will shift uh, pretty dramatically. And, you know, Doc, that's another thing, too. You know, duration in this kind of wind and rain uh, could enhance the power outage potential, couldn't it? Well, yeah, the duration of winds is a big factor in power outages and damage and the strength of the gusts. So you keep hammering the same locations here with gusts for a few hours. Then you really rack up the damage and the down trees and the down power lines and the flying debris becomes more and more of a problem. So there are some past hurricanes maybe that came in this way that maybe you didn't get as much wind damage as you might in this case because of the duration of how long you're going to get that eye wall. But uh, Jim, the recent gust uh, at Wilmington Airport inland there is 56. So you've got to be gusting stronger than that. My goodness, look at that. He is really in the heart yeah, of it now. Is, uh, I, I just had to get down. I just had to get down for a second. I mean, I've been standing and holding that position, kind of like holding a squat for, for 15 minutes. Uh, not, you know, not an easy thing to do. So I'm just going to take a knee here. Uh, we can still talk to you, obviously, and, and, and report on what's going on here. But yeah, the, this has got to be, you know, 80-ish, uh, which almost knocked me right off my feet. So I just said, you know what, heck, it's time to, time to just take a knee here and then and hopefully deal with some of these winds a little bit lower uh, down toward the ground. But uh, guys, if you're just joining in again, we're dealing with this this, this northeastern eye wall of Hurricane ECS, and it has caused power outages. Literally, Carolina Beach and Curry Beach, uh, now up here to Wrightsville Beach. Uh, Dr. Nab mentioned Surf City Topsail uh, next in line for this thing. It's come down a little bit, but not much. And if it is going to go more north than east, it is going to keep all of these beaches, Doc, right, uh, in the wind duration. It's just going to change the direction a little bit, like you mentioned, uh, more out of the south, as it would, would be, tend to be west of you at that point. And this northeastern part of the uh, hurricane, the northeastern eye wall, this is the part that had the strongest winds a couple or three hours ago when it was down 
here and the hurricane hunters were flying through when they went through that northeastern eye wall that's when they got the flight level winds that showed that the surface wind estimates were accurate and that we had a hurricane that was in the northeastern eye wall now this has got to be the strongest part of the hurricane right where jim is and and it's yeah. it's onshore unobstructed flow so you're going to have the strongest sustained winds anywhere on land i think pretty close to where you are right now jim yeah, I mean, the fact that you said we're, we're, you know, even strong tropical storm at the airport, which is inland, um, <laughs> they're a heck of a lot stronger here and, and more persistent. And unfortunately, uh, you know, even less wind than what I'm getting uh, could easily cause power outages. So certainly prepare for that and, and, and look for the best as this thing comes north. But uh, kind of if you haven't lost power, the fact that we're going to be in this for several hours if the center goes to your west, as Dr. Nab was mentioning, you get the southern part of the wind. It may not be as strong, but it may be just enough to kind of push us over the edge. So, Doc, because I haven't had a chance to look at my phone and my radar, you tell me, uh, you know, is there anyone to anticipate how much time, how much, how much more time we're in this like this? Oh, my goodness, Jim. Well, I, I don't think it'll be this strong for the next couple of hours, but you will be in the eastern eye wall for the next couple of hours. So I think this is probably the worst of what you're going to experience, but it isn't going to get all that much better because, again, center of circulation is going to pass to your west. So here's Jim, and then here's downtown Wilmington, and then the center of circulation will pass on the other side of Wilmington. And so he's not going to get the eye out at Wrightsville Beach. It's going to go this direction and intersect I-40 north of Wilmington. So he'll be in the eastern eye wall this whole time. Now, I think this is the strongest part, but this part is no picnic either. So, Jim, it's going to be a long haul. You're just going to be changing the direction in which you face because it will come out more out of the south and then south-southwest. Wow, look at that. Really getting hit hard. Well, thanks for the... Uh... <laughs> Thanks for the great news, Doc. Yeah, I gotta tell it like I, it is, Jim. I say that in, in, in eight quotes. <laughs> no, I know, buddy. I know you're not. Uh, and I, you know, the, the problem is though, is that just keeps people and homes and, and whatnot into the winds. You know, we had a couple of ladies that came down earlier, so uh, and as the wind picked up, it's kind of interesting. Um, they, they were just like, you know, this is really scary out here. We, we haven't experienced winds like this. They were on vacation, and, and they were talking about how, you know, just the, the sounds that the wind makes as it goes up in, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. It's, it's a different animal, and we certainly know it's different. Just be coming. 
down a, a notch. Maybe just a notch, but not much, Doc. Still a lot, a lot of power outage potential with this. And you know, Dr. Knapp talked about this because you know it's easy to focus in on where it's coming ashore and you know who it's impacting at the, in the now, but you know that this is an incredible storm when you when you look at the wind energy that's going to get injected into this uh, for places like Delaware and Maryland and New Jersey and New York and New England that may you know have not been tested. You know, in the last few years, we, we haven't had any really big nor'easters during the winter where we can sometimes get, you know, 100 mile per hour wind gusts. But now we're going to bring up this huge wind core with a tropical system that I think is going to catch a lot of people. Well, so much for the wind lightning. No, you're absolutely catch right, a lot Jim. Of people yeah. off guard. Yeah, because of how strong it is as it's coming ashore, and because we're going to have that that low-level jet with the trough coming in uh, and fully leafed trees, a system that's 85 miles an hour when it's coming ashore, because it's stronger now and because it's moving so quickly over North Carolina, Virginia overnight, tomorrow and tomorrow night, it's going to still be a very potent tropical storm. So here's the official landfall once again at 11.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time at Ocean Isle Beach. That's not far east of the South Carolina, North Carolina border. It's west uh, and southwest of Wilmington, North Carolina. Max winds 85 miles per hour. Let's take a live look at Ocean Isle. Uh, this, again, is relatively calm, right? That's what you would expect if you're in the eye of a hurricane. Uh, now, they're going to get the south side of this before too much longer. And I'm pretty sure the winds are not gusting to 48 at the moment. Uh, at that location, uh, you don't have the observations uh, be updating that quickly, but because this is moving so fast, you don't want to be outside and go venture out and see what it's like because you're going to be getting the southern eye wall very quickly and then the winds will pick up dramatically and things will start flying around again. Uh, so with a fast moving hurricane, you got to stay inside. And you know, this is where the center circulation came ashore. And so here's the South Carolina and North Carolina border. And then here's Wrightsville Beach right in here. And Ocean Isle Beach is there just west of Holden Beach. And a Category 1 hurricane, you, and you think Category 1, well, that's not all that strong, but, but the, the pictures we're seeing and what Jim is going through shows you a Cat 1 hurricane is very, very dangerous. And Jim is taking every precaution he can to stay away from flying debris. Jim, how bad is it now compared to a few minutes ago? Yeah, I mean, this has just been relentless now for about, what, 30 minutes since we've been out here uh, in the strongest part of this. If anything's changed, Doc, it's been the rain maybe has lightened up just a little bit, uh, but that's it. It is still hammering with the wind. And, and now even as I look toward the, the ocean, the, the power's out here, I think, uh, at the hotel. The power is out here at the hotel as well. So DC uh, is having its way with southeastern North Carolina. Ocean Isle Beach, official landfall point, 11-10 this evening. We'll be right back. Find your keys. Here we go, huh? Tropical storm up the top, Utah, whatever. <laughs> have this little flood here. I'm getting ready to go to the ride. Okay, it leads to the film. As you can see, flooding conditions already. Park. I call it Hope Park on the map. Lily, 
could be the people that lived around here. Yeah. But then, I don't know what. Oh, my director <laughs> told me I'm not loud enough. Is that what you're saying, director? Yes. Well, we don't know that because we haven't watched the video. But anyway, as you can see, the rain is coming down. It's not that windy. It was windy about 10 minutes ago, but uh, it's not really that bad. I want my pants to be doing this. <laughs> but I'm not, that's not happening. As you can see, I got my winter jacket on. I'm going to pull this out for another couple of months. But, uh, It's August 4th, 2020. Here comes the wind gusts now. It's a little bit of wind gusts anyway. The rain's coming down pretty hard. We've seen some flooding earlier, but uh, uh, no, the storm's going to wind up really quick. By about, I'd say about noon, it should be over. Most, for the most part. But still got a couple more hours left. Oh, there's some. Show it here, but down there is looks like it's flooding. Yeah. Looks like the creeks are overflowing, but all in all, it ain't that bad right now. The storm went a little bit to the, a uh, little bit further to the coast than they forecast. Anyway, we'll be back later with some more updates. Another shot here. See the wind picked up a little bit. And the rain on the street. Um, the wind ain't been too bad, but uh, these rain bands are really coming by and dropping a lot of rain over here. We're getting more rain than I thought we would. We're getting more rain than wind, which is typical for getting the west wall of the eye, which is what we're getting. The eastern shore is where all the wind and a lot more rain. These things, um, this is like the first um, mm, tropical storm we've gotten, but and there's maybe more to come. You know, it's only August 4th, and there's a lot to go. August is August and September are the two busiest months in, well, the height of the hurricane season. And up here, our height is in September. So another month or so. I mean, really, September, the big storms, Isabel and Floyd, hit in September, around almost the same date in second week of September. So we got a uh, little ways to go, but yeah, this storm is, uh, it's got a pack punch to it. It didn't really form too well, you know, there was a lot of wind shear, but um, if I could, you know, watch that rain, kind of like zoom out a little bit, you can see the trees in the background with a little bit of wind to them. I mean, not really that much, but, yeah, we'll get some more updates before later. Right now, it's about 10-something. Get my hand out of the way. I hate when I do that. Oh, the wind and rain's picking up. Yeah. Nice gust here. Sasha, mm. oh, in the back. <laughs> and it's on the camera. I'm trying to shield my camera. Show you the flooded yard. Oh man, look at this. Oh shit, my plants over there. Oh no, this isn't good. shouldn't be flooded down here. But look at that. Sheesh. 1 a.m. Eastern as
we follow ICS moving up into Canada right now. That's after the storm made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane last night along the North Carolina coast with wind gusts approaching 100 miles per hour. Tonight, millions are without power from Maine to North Carolina as ICS finally moves into Canada. I'm Storm Specialist Carl Parker alongside hurricane expert Dr. Rick Nabb. We still have a threat for damaging winds and some heavy rain still in parts of Maine in particular. We just got a new advisory and uh, there you see the latest on the tropical storm warning. Still some very gusty wind in parts of New England at this hour. We want to go to our hurricane expert Dr. Rick Nabb and Rick, you know, while it is broadly true that tropical cyclones weaken as they move from the ocean into land. There are a lot of caveats to that statement. There are a lot of other factors that come into play. Yeah, especially in a situation like this where, number one, it's fast moving. Uh, number two, it's not all that far from the Gulf Stream and the warm Atlantic. It was still bringing in a lot of energy off the ocean, even though it was centered over land. And it was becoming a hybrid during the day on Tuesday. It was uh, bringing in a lot of non-tropical energy into the mix. Uh, and only now has it lost uh, all the tropical characteristics and we've got a post-tropical cyclone that's centered just over the border between uh, Vermont and Canada, about 45 miles east-southeast of Montreal. And by the way, there have been other past uh, tropical storms and hurricanes that have come ashore and caused a lot of problems in southeastern Canada, in Quebec, and uh, so they've experienced this before. This is not unprecedented, but it certainly doesn't happen every year, does it? So the center of the low uh, that is still Isa Is is still associated with a system that is producing maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. That is unlikely to be occurring in here. It is likely occurring over water off to the southeast because the winds of tropical storm force still extend uh, some 200 miles off to the east, especially open exposure uh, over water. So this is why we still have the tropical storm warnings in effect. So no, it's not a tropical storm anymore, but we are still getting the tropical storm conditions. And so what has happened is that uh, from the Merrimack River there in Massachusetts, eastward, that is on the coast of Maine, that's where the tropical storm warning uh, at the coast is still in effect. And some of these inland uh, warnings will uh, be trimmed off uh, before too much longer. But we're still getting strong winds and relatively recent reports of still trees coming down, power lines coming down. So we still have issues, especially in Maine. So here is the cone and there will be an intermediate public advisory from the Hurricane Center at 2 a.m. because they're still writing advisories. They still have the tropical storm warning up. So the Hurricane Center hasn't dropped this. It's just the designation, no longer tropical storm, post-tropical cyclone Isa Is. But it is going to lose its complete identity here in the next uh, day or so and get absorbed by a larger system there over eastern Canada. Here are the winds right now. We're still gusting to 28 in Boston, 35 uh, in Portland. So still very strong gusty winds there in southeastern New England. And over the next few hours, uh, things will calm down uh, in Boston and Nantucket even more. And then by, you know, 3, 4 in the morning, even the coast of Maine uh, will probably calm down a bit. So maybe they'll be able to take down that tropical storm warning when we get to the 5 a.m. advisory. But the damage is already done, isn't it? A lot of power outages still ongoing from North Carolina northward into Maine. So especially in the northern end of this, uh, it's too dangerous, uh, Carl, for crews to get out and to uh, restoring power because the